Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video we are going to explore how we can run Snowpart Python script in AWS Glue Python cell job. Okay, so suppose for example you are having a Snowpart script already written and then you want to schedule that using AWS Glue platform. Maybe using event page you want to trigger that particular glue job or from Lambda you want to trigger that particular glue job in an event driven manner and that glue job should basically execute that snowpark script right so if you are encountering this kind of situation then what setup you need to configure to make that snowpark script runnable in glue execution environment that we are going to explore with a practical experiment okay so here i have already taken a sample json data set what we will try to do first we will load this particular data in a s3 location and then we'll be creating a snowflake external stage pointing to that S3 location. And then we'll try to read that data using Snowpark data frame. We will do some sort of data pre-processing. And after flattening this particular JSON data, we will load in a snowflake table. That simple experiment we are going to do. And how to do this snowflake, snowpark, JSON integration that I have already explained in my previous video. You can check the link given in the description box to explore that particular concept in detail. Okay. So here this is our dataset sample IDs dataset in JSON format I have taken and I have already uploaded in a S3 bucket that is snowpark glue test and here this is our dataset. Okay. Now here what we will do as a first step we will be creating a external stage pointing to this location. So for this particular experiment, I am creating a face database called Ramu. So first I am dropping the database if it exists. Here it is executed and now I am creating this particular database. I am using this particular database. And now here I am creating a file format of type JSON. As part of the next step, I am creating an external stage pointing to our this particular S3 bucket where our JSON file is available. I am using AWS access key and secret key based authentication but for better security especially for production system we should follow AWS IAM role based authentication which I already discussed in my previous video. And then here I am mentioning the file format. So I will execute this command also. And then here if I execute list command on this external stage it will beautifully show us snowpark.json data whatever is available in our this external stage. Okay. Now here for example as we know that we can directly query our external stage data. So here I am executing this particular command and here if you see that using t.$1 in a variant column we can load the complete JSON data. If we want to flatten it out using simple colon symbol and then mentioning the key we can flatten this JSON data and extract specific key value pair and if I execute this is what the data set we are getting. Okay. The only problem in this particular output is the class name is coming with double quotations. Okay, so we can trim these double quotations out using simple trim function. And then if I execute this particular query, here you will see that the data is properly flattened and we are getting it. Now the same kind of operation suppose we want to do using Snowpark and then finally load this flattened data in a snowflake table. That we will try to do. So as of now, if you see here, if I refresh our databases. Here we are having a Ramu database just now whatever we have created and in our public schema currently we are having no table. That means no table is getting created. These particular queries whatever we have executed directly we executed on top of our snowflake external stage. But we have not loaded this data in some table yet. Cool. So here now let me switch to the snowpark script and it is the same what I discussed in my previous videos. Here first what we are doing. We are importing the snowpark session, snowpark functions and all the data types from snowpark. And then here we are setting up the connection. Okay. We need the account information, user ID, password, role, warehouse, database and schema. Right. And what we are doing, we are storing this kind of information in a separate Python file. So let me just copy this information and suppose we are declaring these variables in a separate Python file. And that Python file we will import and that Python file name for example snf underscore secrets. Okay. So that Python file will be importing in this particular line. And then here we'll be setting up our connection parameter. That is these primary informations we'll be requiring. Right. So account name will be coming from account variable. Whatever we'll be configuring here. So this particular snowflake file will be treating as variable declaration file. And that one we will be importing here. So that way all the variables whatever we are going to declare in this particular file will be available in this code. 
and from there we are taking the respective values as simple as that and then here we are creating this snow park session and then here we are reading this particular json data from this external stage ramu.public.snowsimple and this is this page whatever we have created here right ramu.public.snowsimple pull up to this and then here we are reading the data so initially as we know that whenever we try to read a json data it will come in a single variant column which is kind of having name dollar one from there we are basically using select expression to flatten that particular data okay and after flattening suppose we are taking the id column it will be having dollar one colon id if you are taking sepal length column dollar one colon sepal length like this way column names will be but we don't want dollar one colon sepal length rather we want only sepal length as column name right so as part of the next step we are doing this renaming of column okay and for that i have declared a dictionary and if this particular column name we are having after flattening it should be converted to only this name dollar one colon id to only id then dollar one colon sepal length should be only converted to sepal length like that what is the current name and what is the column name we are looking for that i have defined in this dictionary okay and then here i am iterating in this particular dictionary and I am using with column renamed functionality of Snowpark, which is available in PySpark also, just to rename the columns. Okay, right. And once that step is done, I am just selecting the specific columns. And as we discussed while discussing SQL query, that class name comes with double quotation. In SQL, we were basically using trim function. Here in Snowpark, we are having replace function also. So I am passing this particular class name column via replace function. And double quotation I am replacing with nothing okay and that column name I am defining as class name as simple as that I am using dot show just to print this data in cloudwatch logs but this is totally optional you can ignore this and then finally I am writing this particular data in a table within our Ramu database in public schema and the table name is flattened underscore data underscore from underscore okay so this is the code based on snowpark and json data handling and this is taken from my previous video where i explained how to work with json data and snowpark the link i'll be providing in the description box you can go through that to understand each step in more detail right now what i will do i will quickly go to aws management console in a new tab and here i will create my glue job so here i'll go to glue and then here i'll go to etl jobs and then here I will click on script editor and this is a simple python cell job so I will choose that option and start phrase create this script here I will update my script and the job name and all these details I need to update so here basic properties so here I can give snowpark glue integration white this is our job name okay right I am role here I will choose this particular one existing description if you want you can provide if you want you can ignore not a problem python version 3.9 let it be whatever common libraries are available in glue that I want to load so keep this checkbox on and then here data processing unit it, it is fine because anyway snowpark in the back end going to use the compute warehouse of our snowflake so keeping minimum configuration for our data processing unit in glue is fine number of is zero that is fine script file name snowpark blue integration yt.py that is fine script path let it be as it is if you want you can change it not a problem and then here these properties we can keep as it is okay now one more file we need to create and that is snf secret okay very important and that is this one so in this particular demo i am using account admin role only because if you see all these databases and tables or stages whatever we have created that is done using account admin and we are having currently only one warehouse in our this snowflake free trial and that is compute underscore wh so here i have defined that same database name and schema name i have kept ramu and public whatever we have created here okay here you can see we are having ramu database and public schema but currently no table is available okay right so here that is done i need to provide the account details user id and password so for that what i will do here i will open snowflake in a new tab and then here i will click on this and then here admin and then here accounts i'll go and here i am having our account locator i will copy this particular one and i'll paste this 
I don't need to provide HTTPS colon slash slash and snowflake computing dot com also not needed. Only the locator and the AWS region we need to mention. Okay, and then we need to provide user ID and password, which I cannot show you. So I will just provide the user ID and password, and I will save this particular file as snf underscore secrets dot py. Okay, whatever you are mentioning in this import command, that same Python file name we should be providing here. I hope you are getting this from basic concept of Python. So here if you see snf underscore secrets dot py file is already created. So now we are good to go. We need to upload this particular file in some S3 location. So this is kind of a reusable Python code you can think. And if you want to import that reusable Python code in any Blue script, then there is a parameter what we need to pass and that is available in this Blue documentation. And that particular parameter is extra py files. So if I scroll below. Here you will be getting this option extra py files the amazon s3 path to additional python modules that aws glue adds to the python path before running your script that's what we want right that when this particular glue job will run before that this snf secrets.py file whatever we have created here where we have declared all the snowflake required connection variables that should be available in that python execution environment so for that we can just put this extra py files as parameter in our glue job okay and that should be available in amazon s3 and if you are having multiple files then you can provide that complete path with comma separated values so that we are going to do so that extra py files i am going to upload in some other location maybe and here for example i will choose this one and here i will upload my snf underscore secrets dot py file in this location okay so here i have just dragged and dropped my snf underscore secrets file and that is done so i can click on this to get the complete path and that is basically this one i will copy this s3 url and i will go back to my blue job and here if i scroll below here i am getting an option of job parameter so here this is the value and the key name should be this one extra py files so i'll just put that okay that is done so this way it will be easily imported now here if you want you can provide some tags i am not providing that as of now and i'll click on save so here my glue job is successfully saved i can go back to my etl jobs I can refresh this and here our snowflake glue integration yt is ready last modified 11 13 pm just now so what i will do i will click on run job and here you can see the job is started i will open this run details in a new tab and let's see whether our job able to run successfully or not so currently here you can see the job is in running state let's wait for a few seconds to check whether it is properly working or not and here you can see our job is failed what it is throwing module not found no module named snowflake okay so why it is throwing an error because here if you see we are importing the snowpark modules and by default in our glue execution environment the snowpark module is not available so we need to import that when our job is running so for that we are having another job parameter and that name is additional python modules i'll just search here so here this is the one here you can see the description a comma delimited list representing a set of python packages to be installed before your job runs okay and i want to make sure when the snowpark is running in glue environment before that the snowpark should be installed in our execution environment from pypy packages okay so that i will be making sure by providing this particular job parameter so for that i'll be going to my job and I need to go to job details. I'll scroll below in advanced properties. So I'll click on add parameter. And here additional Python modules I'll be choosing. And here I need to provide that particular Python module name what I want to install. So here it is basically snowflake hyphen snowpark hyphen python. So here I'll be pasting that and then I'll provide equal to equal to. I want maybe for example this particular version. Okay. So I'll put that okay that is done but here if you see earlier we have already provided one particular job parameter and that is extra py files right that is gone no need to get confused 
here that particular extra pi files either you can provide as job parameter or it can take in libraries also so it is kind of a library right because here snf secrets it is nothing but a reusable code so python is treating that as a library and it has taken here so no need to worry on that and here additional python modules we have configured this snowflake snowpark python package so in the runtime first it will install from pypy and then it will run our python code if you want to install multiple python modules you can provide that as comma separated values in this particular job parameter okay and i need to save this particular code okay our code is saved i'll go to run console and then here what i will do i will refresh this particular screen here currently you can see our job ran only once if i go to my snowflake and here if i refresh here in our ramu database in public schema there is no table and here without any further delay i will try to rerun my job i can close this windows unnecessarily opened things to avoid confusion and then here i will run this particular job again okay so here you can see our job is now in running state and we can hope that this time it should run properly because here we have configured that particular python module whatever is needed to be installed before running this job and ideally it should install that first before running our actual code okay and then we should read the data from that s3 location where our this external stage is pointing it will flatten this data it will rename the columns and finally it will create a table called this particular one in our snowflake environment in ramu database in public schema okay so let's wait for a few seconds and here you can see our job is succeeded here we are having the job id and if you want you can check the cloudwatch logs here i can click on output logs and let me first show you the cloudwatch and then i'll go to snowflake so here our log stream is available if i expand that here you will see that first it is installing lot of python and snowflake related dependencies so here if you see downloading snowflake snowpark python okay so that means it is downloading first and then after that it is executing our python code so here if you see in our python code here we have executed dot show so in cloudwatch log somewhere we should see that particular data so yeah see here due to df dot show execution here it is printing that data set in tabular format right and now it's time to check in snowflake i'll refresh our database and here we'll able to see currently a new table got created just now a minute ago it was created let's inspect our data place name in the editor and here i will execute select star from this particular table i'll just execute this code and here you can see beautifully our data got loaded from s3 to snowflake using snowpark and that snowpark script we successfully able to run in aws glue not only this integration but we learned two more very important job parameter one is additional python modules using which from pypy or some custom distribution python environment we can install any python package before running our job and if we want to use some reusable python code created by us we can easily provide that using extra py files that is this particular job parameter right i hope you understood this all the relevant codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section for your practice if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment section by providing the timestamp and your doubt i will try to reply back asap this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching